So thank you very much. It's always an honor to be there uh, sharing a dais with Dr. Professor uh, C.S. Yaznik, sir. And thank you very much, uh, Mayu. Thank you, madam. Yeah. My today's talk is on management of GDM. I'll be very, very brief in, in focusing on the, on the, some slides on introduction, glycemic targets, uh, what are the targets we, should, we have already uh, fixed and across the globe which is being followed. Uh, there's some, some slides on, on glucose monitoring, how should we monitoring these cases and the management part and the carry home masses. Thank you and congratulations, Mayur, Ajay, uh, Tony and the team of Hormone India. No conflict of interest for this particular session. This is almost th multiple thousand years of, uh, from now that uh, Chanakya has said that when a life gets seeded in a mother's, mother's womb, its age, deeds, wealth, education and death all are determined right there. And then what Dr. Yaznik has also said, the body's susceptibility to lifestyle disease was programmed intrauterine. Gestational programming is a process where we have just heard from uh, the from Dr. Yaznik that whereby the stimuli or the stresses that occur at the critical or sensitive period of fetal development permanently change the structure, physiology and the metabolism which predisposes an individual to disease in the adult life. And that's why the concept of fetal origin of adult disease. With this background, we understand that even a mildest degree of hyperglycemia might be detrimental for the for the baby, it may have epigenetic changes and the exposure to a diabetic environment in utero is associated with increased occurrence of impaired glucose tolerance, defective insulin secretory response in adult offspring, independent of the genetic predisposition. And now let us come to the clinical part of it that uh, hyperglycemia pregnancy is being divided into two diabetes in pregnancy and gestational diabetes. These are, these are the FIGO guidelines where they have actually uh, I'll just take the laser pointer here. Yeah. So, yes, that, that you have one is diabetes in pregnancy, it's a gestational diabetes. We are today focusing on GDM, which is typically uh, appearing in pregnancy, may disappear after delivery. Diabetes in pregnancy is those group of individuals who might be having pre existing type 1 or type 2 diabetes and they are, they are becoming pregnant. And the other, the same group, but, uh, uh, but which, which was diagnosed during the pregnancy for the first time and that that is actually pre-existing diabetes. So they are also being classified as DIP because the treatment or management strategy in DIP differs uh, quite significantly versus the management of, of gestational diabetes. We have Government of India guidelines which are published in 2014 and 2018 for management of diabetes and they recommend that 75 gram glucose to be given orally uh, uh, irrespective of the time of the meal, maybe fasting or non-fasting. And they take two hour test. If it is more than 140, we call it GDM. If it is uh, less than 140, it is normal. Now, uh, we, we, when we talk about management, we first, we should be knowing about the glycemic targets. And it's almost 20 years, uh, from 30 years from now, when St. Vincent declaration said that achieve a pregnancy outcome in diabetic mother, that should approximate that of the non-diabetic women. Now, let us understand what is the normal blood glucose in non-diabetic pregnancy. And this is a, a CGM data. The fasting never exceeds around 70, 70s, 1 hour 109 mean and 2 hour 99 and 24 hours around 88. So, this is what is non-diabetic glycemic uh, sugars uh, in pregnancy. And that is why the recommendation says the fasting should be less than 90. The two hours can be there should be less than 120. Some of the school of thought, thought they say fasting should be less than 95. But in gestational diabetes, practically fasting remains normal. Usually it is little around 10% lower than the uh, non-pregnant state. And that is why, uh, because baby is continuously being fed and mother is taking meals intermittently. And that's why fasting blood glucose in such uh, in pregnant women uh, remains little on lower side if it is gestational diabetes. And gestational diabetes typically presents to you with postprandial hyperglycemia. So what is the role of HbA1c and CGM when you talk about monitoring? We should try to achieve uh, HbA1c ideally should be less than 6. Less than 6.5 is also acceptable to have almost similar neonatal or the risk of congenital malformation. But anything above 7 is, is going to increase the risk of congenital malformation. Say if it is around 10 or 11, 
it comes to further higher. So the risk of uh, congenital malformation increases uh, significantly as the HbA1c goes above 7. 7 is acceptable as per the guidelines if there is a risk of hypoglycemia, especially in type 1 diabetes. So when you talk about preconception -pre care or type 1 or type 2 planning for pregnancy, you should try to achieve 6, maximum 6.5. And in patient with higher risk of hypoglycemia, try to achieve less than 7 at least. There's a new matrix, which is a CGM matrix, where they now say uh, the, the CGM matrix uh, range of time and range for pregnancy is 63 to 140. And ideally, in type 1 diabetes, more than 70% of them should be having the 30 IR of 63 to 140, more than 75, 70%. Time below range should be less than 4%, which is less than 63. Less than 54 should be less than 1. And time above range should be less than 25. This is for type 1 diabetes. For type 2 diabetes, they say the TIR should be more than 80% and not 70%. And this is uh, the difference between type 1 versus type 2. And in GDM also, we expect it to be more than 80%. Now, what are the recommendations for use of HbA1c and CGM in pregnancy due to increased red, turn, uh, red cell turnover? A1c is slightly lower in normal pregnant women, and that's why A versus non, uh, normal non-pregnant women. Ideally, the A1C targets should be less than 6 if they can be achieved without significant hypoglycemia, but the target may be relaxed up to 7 if it is necessary to prevent hypoglycemia, the class B evidence. When used in addition to pre- and the postprandial self-mounting of blood glucose, CGM may help to achieve HbA1C targets better. Use, uh, when used in addition to SMBG targeting traditional pre- and postprandial targets, CGM can reduce macrosomia. Neonatal hypoglycemia in type 1 diabetes. There is no study in, in type 2 or GDM. CGM metrics may be used as used in a, as an adjuvant, but cannot replace SMBG, which is gold standard in pregnancy diabetes. Emphasis and about HbA1c, uh, when you estimate A1c, glucose management indicator, the calculation should be not be used. Uh, uh, means we should not be using the POC device. Instead, the NGSP certified best method should be used. Emphasis on the on the daily uh, frequency of HMBG should be should be made. We should, if it is a pre-gestational diabetes or some GDM requiring higher dose of insulin, you should always monitor fasting, pre post breakfast, pre lunch, post lunch, pre dinner, post dinner, and 3M blood glucose on a regular basis. Someone who's on basal bolus therapy. How to achieve these targets? Medical nutrition therapy and exercise. Medical so almost 70% of GDM will do well with the uh, MNT and exercise. Few of them will require pharmacotherapy. Let us start, talk about pharmacotherapy. This is a trial, a European multicentric randomized controlled trial versus where, where they have shown physical activity versus uh, healthy eating uh, to reduce the risk of gestational diabetes. And they have shown that antenatal healthy eating intervention is associated with less gestational weight gain, lower fasting glucose compared to uh, with the compared with physical activity alone. And these findings require larger data to further consolidate this idea. This is about the exercise. This exercise data says the moderate intensity in, intensity resistant exercise was helpful for improving blood glucose control, insulin use, gestational weight gain, and blood pressure. So physical activity in this exercise as well as uh, uh, if, if permitted by obstetrician and, and MNT is important for GDM. Let's talk about the oral drugs. First is about metformin. Now, this is a meta-analysis where neonatal infant and childhood growth following metformin versus insulin treatment in, in women with gestational diabetes. And this is, this is a, a systematic re review, which has shown that the following intrauterine expert metformin for treatment of GDM, neonates were found to be significantly smaller than neonates whose mothers were treated with insulin alone. Despite lower average birth weight, metformin-exposed children appear to have experienced accelerated postnatal growth resulting in heavier infant and higher BMI by mid-childhood compared to children whose mothers were treated with insulin. And that is why such pattern of low birth weight and postnatal catch-up growth has higher, have higher risk of having cardiometabolic diseases in adult life. And that is why there were little question on metformin. Then this this met, uh, why, why this is a, again a hypothesis that fetal concentration of metformin are equal to maternal. This is a fact. And the metformin can inhibit growth, inhibit growth, suppresses mitochondrial respiration, 
have epigenetic modif- modification of, on the gene expression it may it will mimic fetal nutrient restriction and alter the postnatal gluconeogenic response because both placenta and the fetus expresses the metformin transporters and exhibit high mitochondrial activity these properties there is important question about the developmental programming of metabolic disease in offspring and that is why we say insulin remains the drug of choice but we have then mitri trial which is again a clinical trial and not the lab data here uh, mitri trial is those women who are already having type 2 diabetes and metformin is started pre conception and continued delivery and they have found that metformin treated women achieve better glycemic control required less insulin gain less weight weight and fewer cesarean sections compared to placebo metformin exposed children with less metformin exposed children had reduced adiposities but there is higher proportion for small for gestational age now let us see what does the government of india says it says that metformin or insulin is accepted medical therapy for, uh, medical menu for pregnant women now uh, who is not maintained on on uh, on mnt insulin is the first drug of choice and metformin can be considered 20 weeks of after gestation insulin can be started any time during pregnancy and if pregnant women with uh, uh, with and, and also those who are presenting to you a gdm before 20 weeks of pregnancy and mnt fails so metformin in government of india's guidelines says it should be given after 20 weeks in gdm these are recent guidelines of february 2022 where european group has approved uh, metformin as a first oral anti diabetic drug to be used even from the conception to birth so this is the first government uh, uh, european guidelines which has approved it what about sulfonylurea sulfonylurea are, are known to cross placenta and have been associated with increased neonatal hypoglycemia the concentration of this glebenclamide or glyburide in placenta in, in umbilical cord plasma is of almost 50 to 70% of the maternal level it was it is associated with higher rate of neonatal hypoglycemia macrosomia than insulin or metformin it has failed to show uh, to found the non inferiority to insulin based composite outcome of neonatal hypo macro or hyperbilirubinemia and unfortunately the long term safety data of glyburide is not available that is why glibenclam is not being com- commonly used in our country few of the people are using it but it is being commonly used in 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 us what about insulin there are some absolute indications for insulin therapy those who have high hbavc ketoneuria medical uh, comorbidities like renal dysfunction hepatic dysfunction obstetric comorbidities macrosomia iugr hydramnios these are the cases or sudden uh, expected deterioration of the glycemic control steroid therapy insulin remains a drug of choice we have some data to share with you insulin pre existing diabetes this type 2 diabetes who uh, 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 this possibly the data coming uh, from this part of the country uh, was the first data that you have in ggi you have the uh, they are requiring uh, they are requiring insulin gestational glucose intolerance which is a uh, terminology where we use between 120 to 140 after de- giving glucose so that's being classified as ggi then gdm and pre gestational type 2 diabetes in the first trimester at the time of diagnosis not first trimester at the time of diagnosis they require around 0.1 unit per kg body weight gdm requiring around 0.25 unit and pre gestational type 2 diabetes 0.5 unit per kg body weight with increase from 0.1 to 0.15 0.25 to 0.4 0.5 to 0.8 it's so almost one and a half time increase in the in the in the doses of insulin as the pregnancy advances till delivery this this matches with most of the data coming from west insulin regimen in in diabetic pregnancy uh, people say t- people use t- uh, twice a day premixed insulin but when it comes to gestational diabetes i strongly recommend to go for frequent doses of uh, prandial insulin rather than rec- using the mixed insulin because the, the your fasting is usually normal and many of the gdm will require very small dose of uh, three times a day be- bolus insulin there is a comparison between the basal bolus therapy versus premixed and it was found that the glycemic control was better with the four times a day insulin therapy versus twice a day which are the insulin which are being approved so irregular insulin aspart lispro detemir and nph insulin and and the premix all this is approved uh de- uh aspart faster acting insulin is also approved except blue lysin and degludec Uh, uh uh most of the other insulins are are approved glargin uh, there is a there is a uh, there is a discussion on that that it it is being uh, recommended that if the physician want uh, or a physician feels that if someone is already on glargin and becomes pregnant and this lady 
if, uh, uh, if clinicians feel that by withdrawing and changing the insulin from glycine to some other insulin might deteriorate the glycemic control of a woman in that situation can be given it can be continued now there is a pregnancy outcome in type 1 diabetes using degludec this is a recent data of 2022 the use of degludec during pregnancy resulted in similar pregnancy outcome and uh, but this is from, from the real world setting there is, this is not a uh, uh, not a, uh, uh, a clinical research this is an observational data which cannot be accepted there is no recommendation of using degludec at this moment of time we have some data on twin pregnancy this is a data which has come from us that uh, do twin pregnancy women require twice as much insulin as that of singleton pregnancy and this was in type 1 diabetes when we did it in our patient with type 2 diabetes we were not very much convinced so in collaboration with dr sanjay gupte the center from pune and nagpur we have come out with this data of twin pregnancy gdm women with twin or singleton gestation differed insignificantly in their treatment strategies and insulin doses and the insulin environment need not be proportional to the number of fetuses uh, and the treatment should be planned to achieve the glycemic control can can we just uh, ask someone uh, mayur or the rx team to mute everyone if you don't mind rx team please take control so uh, finally the insulin dose has to be individualized there is no mathematics involved but we have some guidelines through which you can uh, at least start the insulin therapy intrapartum you should try to achieve between blood sugar between 70 to 120 to avoid neonatal hypoglycemia few of the individuals might require insulin infusion if they are on high dose of insulin therapy i'm not going in detail of it let's talk about the postpartum follow up so 15% of gdm women may remain glucose intolerant while the rest of them will become normal women with gdm around 30 to 70% more likely to develop diabetes uh, in next pregnancy and almost 50% develop type 2 diabetes within 5 years after delivery so postpartum ideally uh, the uh, government of india says 6 to 12 weeks uh, you should have 6 6 days 6 weeks and then 6 uh, month and then every year that is what is being recommended for post uh, post uh, partum follow up of diabetes in these women who are, who were who had gdm breastfeeding uh, should be important and there exists an inverse association between the duration of breastfeeding versus type 2 diabetes risk among these pairs women so we should encourage breastfeeding in every women so that they can prevent themselves to develop metabolic syndrome in their adult life and diabetes uh, this is another uh, good paper which has come recently in 2022 uh, that it is very difficult to have a postpartum follow up after the women gets discharged from the hospital and that is why this data is two days postpartum compared with 4 to 12 weeks postpartum glucose tolerance test for women with gestational diabetes and they have concluded that two days postpartum ogtt have similar diagnostic values as that of the 4 to 12 weeks postpartum ogtt in predicting impaired glucose metabolism and diabetes at one year after delivery and are associated with 100% adherence to the test and thus changing the time of glucose tolerance test should be considered to follow to keep a good follow up of these gdm women postpartum finally if the glycemic control can be maximized to the extent that fetus no longer recognizes that the mother is diabetes then the treatment of mother during pregnancy may become the first step uh, towards prevention of obesity and diabetes in the offspring of this diabetic mother this was tested almost 30 years from now 20 years from now in diabetes care and that is why government of india recommends one single test ek jaan se bache do jaan which is again a slogan from uh, from uh, dipsy and uh, it is uh, our proud to say that dr sishi has been awarded padma shri this year and on his birthday our uh, india is the only country in the world where national gdm day has been has been declared on 10th of march to increase awareness and that's why on this basis we started with a prega talk which is a public awareness uh, initiative and campaign across the country on 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 awareness about pregnancy diabetes through dipsy uh, platform and this is the, we have already we have done it in in 21 indian languages uh, across uh, since last uh, uh, february t- 2022 and indian constitution at 22 languages and we have completed in 21 language and the second cycle has also recently started so this is gujarati bengali then tamil telugu hindi uh, uh, oriya oriya marathi assami and then it is in telugu again and this is uh, tamil malayalam sindhi bihari 
इंग्लिश एंड देन कोकणी कश्मीरी डोंगरी मारवाडी पंजाबी अगेन एंड हिंदी अगेन द सेकंड साइकिल अगेन वी हैड तेलुगु एंड वी हैड तमिल एंड दिस इज बंगाली एंड दिस इज तेलुगु एंड गुजराती सो वी हैव वंडरफुल सेशंस फॉर पब्लिक अवेयरनेस एंड दिस विल कंटिन्यू फॉर दिस ईयर अगेन सो जीडीएम टू चाइल्ड टू डायबिटीज अ विंडो ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड एज अ क्लिनिशियन वी शुड नेवर ट्राई टू मिस इट फाइनली आई विल जस्ट वुड लाइक टू कन्वे माय बेस्ट विशेस फॉर हैप्पी नवरात्र happy dashra diwali christmas and happy new year in advance stay safe stay healthy and keep smiling thank you very much for patience listening this is just a a cake here on your left we we never celebrate cutting any occasion uh, can uh, celebrating any occasion of anniversary or birthday by cutting the cake but we cut the fruit and that's another message for every one of us to start and adopt the healthy lifestyle Uh, of uh, instead of using hydrogenated eating hydrogenated fat and encouraging in our children better to use fruit which encourages a healthy lifestyle in future thank you very much for patience listening thank you mayur once again